Alicana del That's Star kind of is like that. Now. He's got S14 lenses over top of like some light bars. Mm-hmm. And his car is so cool. I love his car. It's like, you know, 1100 horsepower turned down. It's fucking big bright <laughs> colors. Dude, he's he's even handsome, dude. His fucking car is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. I love watching him drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to fangirl. Fuck He's you. Handsome. He's so handsome. Oh my he, god. Kevin, put a picture of him. Is he not handsome? Look at him. Look Just how handsome a little that sexy guy beast is. over there. Yeah. <laughs> Wish I had this stubble. I have this ugly. Here, Kevin, put him over top of me right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow make him hold, uh, like, like reach over and hold him for a little bit. <laughs> 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 if he does do it, he gets your face. It's like this. <laughs> ready, ready. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious anyways make sure to take that out no leave. no that's it you keep that shit Kevin. welcome back to the number one drift podcast on youtube i'm dawson i'm nathan i'm casey let's get into it what is what is that what is it's our 10th episode man Oh, okay. Well, woohoo. He put woohoo in there, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> cheers to that, I guess. <laughs> I don't um, take the notes that serious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but this is Casey. Uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself a little bit. So, like, what do you do for a living? What you drive? Uh, all that nonsense. I drive a bunch of turd buckets. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, as, as of right now, I'm a GM at a uh, body shop. Um, I have... As far as vehicles go, I have my tow rig, which is a Dodge 2500. I've got my daily driver, which is a little Murano called the turd. If you're wondering, it's brown. <laughs> um, and then, of course, my drifter is the uh, 240SX S13 with a nice little engine in there. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. It fucks. It's awesome. It's a very cool car. Don't Hell let yeah. him downplay it. Well, um, we'll get into a little bit more on the body work and everything, what your car is. Um, but you wanted to go over this. So I'll let you. Yes. Okay. So if you're listening to this, please go tag Matt Happel on YouTube and tell him to come on the podcast. He messaged us and said he was going to come on the podcast or he would be willing to come on the podcast. But he's in like eerie pencil fucking bania. So I don't know how that we would do that except for fly out to him. And I don't know. So you should tag him and see if we can get him to come here because that would be awesome. I would love to talk to him. He's like a he's like one of my local like heroes. He's awesome. I love Matt Apple. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So tag him. And Whistling <laughs> Diesel. That would what be a very interesting podcast. Well, dude, uh, we, dude. Okay. So he went on to the Roman Atwood podcast right when he commented was it before he commented or after he commented? I can't remember if it was right before or right after he commented on one of our videos. He went on the Roman Atwood podcast and like, dude, I Which remember was probably recorded. Yeah. Okay. Was well, I was before. just saying it came out after the comment. And so then I didn't know that. So I was like, come on our podcast, you know, but then he goes on, who's you're not going to go on our podcast instead of Roman Atwood. I'd go on Roman Atwood's podcast. You yeah. Know, like fucking percent. yeah. yeah so I mean, he can talk. You don't really have the room to, to drive in a Audi R8 neither. Yeah. That's, you know what? I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Right. Right. You're true. That's true. He might he, like, like, Hey, is it okay if I come to your podcast and crash a fucking plane into your house? Like, oh, yeah. I don't know. No, you better hold it outside, man. All right. So how long have you been drifting? Um, what, about three years now? Yeah. Roughly. Somewhere around there. Hell yeah. And um, what did what kind of, what car did you start off with? Uh, same car I have now, actually. No oh, shit. Uh, that was the KA, though. That it? was the KA car. So was it originally KA? It was you, originally yeah. a KA car um, in pieces, but it was a KA <laughs> car. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you change the... Uh, uh, floor pan on that car i didn't change the floor pan i had to patch it with a chevy hood because it had a hole in it that my foot could go through yeah that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that's normal <laughs> at this point <laughs> <It's like insane. laughs> um but why why did you choose to stick with the ka when you first started uh just to get some seat time i didn't want to go massive horsepower right off the bat just because i feel like i needed to learn the car before i actually started going balls out with a V8 car. That's true. Yeah, I see the look on your face over there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nate's not agreeing at all. No, no, no. no. I did, I, like, I, my, the reason that I started with my car the way it was is because my car wasn't going to be a drift car. I was going to make like a drag bag car. Then I met these fuckers, and that's how I got into drifting. Well, that was the other 240s that I've had in the past. Was They were supposed to be just street cars. 
nothing nothing more than a street car just drive to a track or drive to a show and park it look at it oh it's so pretty <laughs> well i you did i have seen that you were into like stance cars and stuff weren't you at one point or at one point. not necessarily stance cars i mean i did have a bag g37 so i kind of kind of stancy dude hard as fuck <laughs> <laughs> hard as fuck that car went hard as hell uh, since you did start on a KA, do you think that is important for people that are new to start on a lower power car? It kind of depends. So I feel like if you have some kind of motor motorsports experience, whether that be just hard driving corners on back roads or as Nate likes to do, Sims, um, I feel like you can actually start with a lot more horsepower than what I did um, just because you have a little bit more motor skills as far as like and reflexes, yeah, yeah. reflexes you know uh, and i cannot talk today but anyways <laughs> yeah <All right. clears throat> okay okay i got this one so what was the hardest part to learn when you first started drifting like what was the, like the the thing where you were like fuck i can't get you know like what was that for you <laughs> mine was not touching the brake that was the hardest thing for me because i i always had a handbrake in it and so yeah. when i first started drifting i was really relying on my handbrake so when i started drifting i didn't have a handbrake at all so I started drifting the 240 with KA, low horsepower, no e-brake. It didn't even work, the, the factory <laughs> one. It was disconnected. Mine barely works. Yeah. <laughs> it was gone. But uh, I started drifting that car, and then the hardest thing to learn was dumbass clutch in when you grab the e-brake. I can't tell you how many times I actually Dude, that killed was the totally car. me too. Really? I killed the car yeah. so many times when I first put the, the hydro in there that it was, it's, it's, mm -hmm. I can't even count them. <laughs> he, he said the same thing okay. and dude when i first started when i first started drifting i didn't even have vr yet i had i just had a, i just had forza on the xbox and so maybe that's why i had that already because dude in forza the brake always locks but you and so were, like, but you were still good. driving on a sim though right yeah 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 that's what i'm saying i think that's where that i i okay. learned i learned out of that because in forza if you pull the brake it takes a second for the gas to come back or for the motor to come back on because it's all like, you know, it's all fake. So if you, yeah, pull, if you even simulated. touch the brake, it locks the back end mm -hmm. up and then the motor turns off or not off. But you so know. it's basically just an on off switch. It's not yeah, necessarily, yeah. there's no. So in my, so in my brain is like, anytime you're doing this, you're doing this, you know, mm -hmm. that's how my handbrake has always been. Mine's always literally been tight as yeah. fuck. I no. It's mine's simple. It's a very simple <laughs> setup. I don't know how <laughs> it would mine it's was not that way it. until I went uh dual caliper in the rear. <clears throat> uh well mine's always been dual caliper. Yours was so. yours was shitty all the way up to the Wheelwoods? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Like you could pull the e brake and it might stop it. Other what times, wood is it? Uh no, it's, it's like the, the fancy boy Just kit. the GK Tech uh oh, the whole oh, yeah. the whole S thirteen kit. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Um, Gotta say, <laughs> we encourage you to buy that. Don't do yes. the 300CX <laughs> thing that I did. It's, it's, it, honestly, I don't think I, it ended up working out to where I was able to like give him some parts to help me put it on. So everybody kind of wants, and I, I, I like deals like that. But after watching him and Chris put the Wheelwood kit on, dude, it just fucking was so. It was pretty no much drama, you know. Like, just went right on. Done. Dude, we were we had a grinder. <laughs> oh, there was. <laughs> Dude, I'm sure there was a whole lot of oh, redneck shit going on there. there. <laughs> I was grinding on one of the knuckles, and Stupid. I was like, you know, like you know how like it's like it's got a piece that's like this, and then it's got a uh, the back knuckle has a piece that goes like this also, <gasps> and then there's the front. You needed a wall yeah. or a spot in the front, and then you needed on, on the other side to clear the caliper. You had to grind this one. Well, I was so fucking like just mad that I was having to do it. I grinded on the wrong one for a second. <laughs> Dude, I just hit it with some spray, but oh, you piece of shit. Um, I, I wouldn't even grind them. I was just like, all right, Nate, this is your problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you're if you're thinking about doing dual caliper kits, don't try and make your own. Just go buy the Wheelwood. I swear to God, unless you know a guy that can plug you for some 300ZX calipers, it's it's cheaper to just yeah. do the expensive parts. That's one of those parts where you probably just shouldn't skip out. Now I did and. We I paid the price for it. I mean, it's gonna work. Oh, it's gonna work fine. It's not. That's not the point. I'm not talking shit about it. I'm just telling other people. Like they're like, oh, dude, he did. Like you know, you know what I'm saying. Like I love Jake Elliott, but he told me he's like, oh, dude, this is what he said to me. By the way, Jake, he said I bought that angle kit from Jake Elliott. We did a little couple of things to it to make it a little bit better than we put it on, and he sold me these dual caliper kits. Like 
this is how new to drifting I was. He goes, you can buy these for like 60 bucks. And I was like, what are those? And he's like, <laughs> he goes, dual caliper kit. And I was like, and dude, it's like, it's literally two pieces of metal. that are like welded. You know what I'm saying? Like this. Yeah. And so he was like, yeah, you might have to get some spacers and you might have to grind a little bit on the knuckle, but you can put it on. And I was like, okay. So I gave him 60 <laughs> bucks, dude. No, <laughs> no, no. It, does not it was like a, that. It was a lot of spacers. It was a lot of grinding. And a lot of grinding. Yeah, yeah. Which is fine. I, like you know, it ended up I, again. It ended up working out better so that everybody got to win. And, and and I got a piece on my car that we did, which is kind of the point of my car. You know yeah. that it's not you just bought everything for it. But if you're up and coming and you're trying to get into drifting. Definitely just buy the GK Tech kit that comes with everything you need. There's no reason to do what I did. It's, 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 it's way more drama. Play yeah, yeah, yeah. That. It's way more drama than it's worth. Actually, that's a good way into this one. So, okay. You have tubs on your car. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a lot of 240 owners, they'll basically just cut the factory tubs out. Mm -hmm. What was your reasoning for putting bigger, tub, bigger tubs in, basically? I guess. To be honest with you, the reason I did that was... Flex. The flex. flex. <laughs> it really was. I, I just wanted... So when I built the car the second time, I guess, or the third, I don't know. Second, third time. Third time. Third time's when you did the tubs. <laughs> I've built this car too many times, apparently. <laughs> Never crash above. It. Just, just keep on building it. <laughs> no crash, baby. No crash, Fast team. Fuck, <laughs> but uh, no, so when I, I redid the engine, I was like, how am I going to make this like engine bay pop? And I was like, if I cut everything out, it's just going to be an open engine bay. And I'm like, mm, not for me. What's wrong with Why an though? engine bay? Just because it would get like just extremely because, dirty, no, or just, just just the flex of it, just to not be like everybody else, really is is why I wanted I to do it. I am here for that. It cool. looks very I'm cool. Every other it. 240 out there that has built a drift spec 240, the whole front end's cut out and it's just tube chassis in the front. Open as shit. I don't no. I don't have no problems with that. It's just I wanted to do something a little out of the ordinary. Yeah. So yeah. I chose to do tubs in the front. It looks very cool. It really does. So, okay, so obviously he's not going to, he's not probably not going to agree with this, but his car is fucking insane. Okay. It's got gussets on the cage. It's tubbed in the front. It's a six liter. It's got all the stuff in the front. Dude, he's like me. <laughs> it's like, it's like your, your ugly stepchild. Like you're like, yeah, oh, he's not that cool, but he's like the quarterback. It's like that. All right. His car is very cool. Don't let him be too humble on, on everybody. But I'm just saying, what was the reason for wanting to do one? At that level, because obviously me and you are kind of similar in the aspects. We like they're grassroots cars. They're mm -hmm. not comp cars, but no. we built them kind of like it's a serious car. I did it because, I, you know, I know that there are people out there that want to see cars like that. I don't really have. I, I like competing. It was fun. You know, I got third, you know, but at the same time, it was like. Eh. So what? Yeah, so what you know? yeah. Okay. So to be honest with you, I don't really have a urge to go compete right now. Right. Um, do I want to in the future? Yes. Yeah. Um, I still have, I, I feel like I have a lot of learning left to do on the car before I decide to go full out. Let's go, let's go comp here, especially power. It needs some more power. Supercharged. Yeah. Yes. Supercharged. Yes. You, you're just running a five, three in it, right? Six. Oh, six. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. Even better. Yes. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Eight man. Nate comes out. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a six. Oh, uh, so the last, not the last NSS event that I did, uh, the one before last year, um, I pretty well blew that engine up. It had like three PSI of oil pressure, full throttle. When a car gives you enough issues, you'll just send her to hell. Yeah, pretty right. much. Send it well, to God. To be honest with you, that was kind of the goal for that that event to be honest with you dude same with my car and it like, didn't blow up i was like okay. like the whole goal to go to that event was i'm gonna blow this engine up here it's gonna be spectacular the radio that you put in it so the, nobody would i don't think think to do that you put a boat radio in yeah. your car we explain why i guess why you I mean, decided to do what's that? the one thing that you always do when you drive a car? You listen to tunes. Yeah, but why Swear a boat cyclists. radio? Instead of just well, like, oh, okay, so. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. So boat radio was seriously chosen for the simple fact that Stupid. the car is not 100% water sealed anymore, especially being a race car. So there's holes all over the floorboard and everywhere else where I've taken stuff out of it. 
So I was like, there's going to be water in there. I'm not going to put a regular radio in there that's not going to be at least waterproof. Oh, that, that does make sense. I've, I, that's a good I guess, question. Yeah, I, I never really thought that. about that. That's the owner's Do you not think I that's overkill, boats. though? Like, what, I mean, is water really going to get right there? If you're driving a rain it's event. Because it's still in the normal position of where your radio would True, be. True, but at the same time, you got to think of uh, there's no defrost, uh, no AC. So all the moisture in the car, especially at a, mm, at a, damn, like a wet event. Either. It's it's hor- you can't see anything anyways. But I'm a bitch. I don't go through yeah. wet. <laughs> but uh, if you do drive at a wet event, <laughs> yeah. you have moisture. Like like the last event that I went to that was wet, the entire floorboard of my car was was covered in water. God damn! Have you like been able to fi- fix getting keeping some out? It's as fixed as it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> it's well okay. So the the main problem is the harnesses at the front. So they come through the through the wheel well right mm-hmm. there in, in the right there in the compartment basically of yeah. the car so all that water coming off those front wheels is just going straight do into you the still have the the uh, no. factory plug hole no you fixed it no it's, it's just still an open hole there's no fix oh, 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 oh i'm gonna fix it i have the same hole i'm gonna fix it with a welder i just didn't know if you had fixed it yet no it's still a hole <laughs> we should actually fix it. austin mcdaniel he <laughs> i remember i don't know if his car is still like this but he has the quarters cut out in his car and he doesn't have it covered back there. So literally if he's raining, he, every time he's driving, it's just spitting tight, w- w- spitting water on him oh my Lord. from the rear tires. Mine's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> no. it's like cold and wet. <laughs> like I, I get no water on me. It's just in the car with me. <laughs> Hmm. Oh. I haven't done enough driving on my car to know if it's going to do that or not. I have a firewall between me and back there. Just drive one sweat. You'll find it. I will. I was just saying. The, oh, the most annoying spot for me is that hole I was telling you about. Yeah, there's two of them. One on each side. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about the passenger. I only care about me. Well, that's where my holly's sitting is on the passenger side. No, that's not a very good place for <laughs> <laughs> No. Mine's in the center. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, wow. Well, I need to make sure I take care of that. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Since your car is so elaborate, what is the like the the one part on your car that you're proud of, like the most proud of? Trunk. No, actually, the engine bay. Well, yeah, yeah. That's I just meant like seriously. a little piece. Oh, like the li- like a little piece. It's something you made. It's, it's a trunk. It's not so. Yeah, I guess the trunk. <laughs> It's, but, you, dude, it's like a hot rod, dude. You're like, why well, you don't need a key? Just walk up to it and it goes, and the trunk comes up. It's awesome. <laughs> it's, if it's, we can it's, insert a clip, go for it. That's a, um, it's a cabinet latch. Is for yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is it really? Yes. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, because I don't have a key for the car anymore. So I was like, how am I How much does it truck? cost? How cheap? How cheap was it? It's like fifty-five <laughs> cents or something. Probably. I think it was like four dollars for this thing. That's awesome. And then I just I just made it a little bit longer and cut a notch in it so it grabbed the uh, lock rod in there and, and actually unlocked the trunk for me. There's not really a good way to show how neat that part is because it really was just something that he had laying around that he made something with. But that's like one of my favorite parts at least because it was just like he was like, "No, nah, we'll just stick this in there," and it was like thunk and went right in. I was like. <laughs> Why, my car never does that. You know? <laughs> my car Why never, can't my car I, work yeah, like that? Dude, I was at Josh's house the other day. Did the same thing. <sighs> it's either that or the stupid uh, Mountain Dew can that's wrapped around. That's my right, oh. dude. Yes. <laughs> Actually, James Dean, when he first built the Eurofighter, I don't know if it still is this way, but the Eurofighter, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, he had this latch system for his bumpers where he just reached inside and then it would just click it on both sides. And that's all that held the bumper. The entire way it was i guess it had like an internal cage on the inside to hold it all still but literally just popped that and it pulled right off and it was like the simplest latch system i could see for a bumper because you know you normally everybody's just doing the quick latches on the I got side one better for that's you that's what's on mine i got one better for you i can throw the bumper on my car and it won't come off yeah, like just his bash bar is built inside the bumper so tight that you don't even need. That's to. how I want to build my yeah. my front bash bar yeah. when I get. Uh, I've tested yeah. it on accident. So, that <laughs> <laughs> <Atta> boy. <laughs> it was uh, it was before the car was painted. Um, I took it down the road and did like a ninety mile an hour pull, and the bumper never moved. And I was like, I got back and I'm like, oh fuck, I didn't do anything with that bumper. It didn't move. I was like, all right, it's good. Air pressure, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Force. Well, okay, so for the viewer, 
I, I think it's because it's a, it like runs in your family, right? Like the reason you got into body work is because your father was into body work. Oh, yeah. Is, okay. Yeah. I was just making sure that one of the questions was what got you into body work? No, that's straight up my dad. Yeah. I remember back when I was like five on top of my dad's old 42 Plymouth that he still has the blue car. Dude, that car is so hard. Um, sanding the roof of this car with a DA in my hands when I was just a boy, just sitting on top of the car, just going, <laughs> Am I doing good, Dad? Yeah, keep up. Body work. <laughs> yeah. This is even though he created a whole all. career. <laughs> How crucial has being a body man been for your team? I know. I'm. We're, so for those who don't know, we drive for the same team. So like, yeah. it's been very crucial, but I'll let you elaborate a little bit more. Well, um, <laughs> definitely keeps me busy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Don't be the body man of the drift team. Uh, in other words, just always go to the track with at least a couple of hammers, some porta powers, and something to pull something out if somebody gets hit somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Keep on going. I will tell we'll you what, you've always got the right tool for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was, I can't remember dude's name. The green two forty vert that was at uh, Clarksville. I'll be your Huckleberry. I don't know. Maybe. That's on the back of the car. I'm pretty sure the green 240 says I I'll be your Was it the Vert? The, you said the Vert? The Vert 240. It was caged? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know which one you're talking I can't about. remember who drove it. But anyways, I, Philip. It was one of Kevin's buddies. Of course. Kevin Smack, don't know. Philip's him. always in the fucking middle of something. <laughs> smacked him right in the quarter panel. And dude's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm like, you got a two by four and a hammer. I will get this car to where you can drive it. <laughs> 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 oh, dude. Uh, the first. Okay. Uh, so. The, all right. So. Oh, fuck it. I'll just tell the story. Justin's going to turn it into a reel anyways. So of listen, so I <laughs> spent eight months moving the radiator to the back of my car, building this elaborate setup for my truck. It works, by the way. It works really good. I drove it to your house and I beat the shit out of it on the way to, on the way home from your house the other day. <laughs> Never got over 170. Mm, anyways. Must be nice. Yeah. So Hell yeah. anyways, I was so excited to test out all this new stuff that the night before I did a bolts check, but the only wheel that I didn't bolts check was the <laughs> one that was near the rear backup camera. And I broke the rear backup the camera being side. a monkey. Yeah, the driver's side. And so driver's side left rear. So I was bolt checking stuff and I didn't tighten the lug nuts up and then I went to bed. And then I got up the next morning and I was like, I'm gonna drive it to work. I made it to work, which is only about a mile away, but on the way home, my wheel fell off. <laughs> didn't quite make it. Yeah. You'll have to remind me to get a picture of this, but it it, it been up. It fucked it up good. It was fucked. Up. And so I immediately, well, I rushed to get the car back together to where I could drive it again, drive it back to the house. And I try and call, I think I tried to call you and you were at work. Mm -hmm. So I try to call Casey. He doesn't answer because he's got an important job and I don't have an important job. So I have all the free time. So I was just like, mm -hmm. so, so now I'm standing in my driveway you know, listen, the, and then my boss got mad because I wasn't at work and I had to tell him, I was like, dude, listen, does your wife ever let you watch your kids? And he goes, yeah. I was like, okay, imagine your, your wife lets you watch the kids while she goes and gets her nails done. And then one of them falls and breaks their femur. He was like, oh. he said, this is Alex. He goes, oh what the fuck is wrong with you? And I was like, okay, this is just like that. Like I can fix it, but it will never be the same. Do you understand? And he was like. Okay, go fix your car. And I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> and I left. So I called Casey and I brought it over. I think it was, was that a Saturday? I think so, yeah. So I bring it over like the following day because obviously I'm distraught, dude. Like I just broke my fucking baby. And dude, he had it fixed the same fucking day. <laughs> like dude, the same day it was fixed. Like not painted and, you know, whatever. But dude, the fucked up part of it that was like sketching me out, fixed. It was amazing. It was, that was the craziest shit ever because I was like, I'm gonna, dude. I'm so stupid. I was like, I'm gonna have to get a new shell. I'm gonna have to make this tr fucking trunk. Up. Like, dude, my trunk is so annoying. I never want to make that again. I know why they just cut holes in it. You know what I mean? Like, it works perfect, but I understand now. You know, it's just not worth the effort. So, yeah. The funny part about that was, is you like standing back there looking at me, and I'm just with a sledgehammer in my hands. Oh, God. oh dude, it's on, dude. I'll, I'll get Kevin. I'll get it. I'll get it off my TikTok. There's a video, and I'm like this. <laughs> oh, oh yes i remember God. that one dude he's just he's just fucking caveman beating his wife on my car bro it was just awful i was like oh no dude. to add another story to you fucking with a hammer um <laughs> i brought my dip my car over after the wreck that i hit that red corvette yeah remember okay i had left to go get something i don't remember what it was but uh it, I couldn't have been gone for more than 20 minutes. And I came back and my fender on that side was completely sunken in. 
like completely. The frame had moved too, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. He pushed it out by just pushing the bash bar out. And it yeah. was like the bash bar was as straight as it ever had. Never mind. Um, but I come back and he's taken my fender that was completely crippled. It looked like an like, accordion. It com- like, Oh, that's right. You were, trying, you were trying to put a black fender on there and your car was white. And I was yeah, like, I had an old black fender. I was you're like, about to go to a drift time. event. I'm not going to let you go to this drift event with a random ass black fender on your car. So let me see if I can beat this fender <laughs> yeah, out. And make shortly it look after half-ass painting decent. it and everything. So <laughs> yeah, but he, he, I came back and it like, dude, the fit like a car the, again. But it, dude, it was, it was perfect. Uh, yeah. it, it looked like wavy, of course, because the metal was deformed, but oh, it's I was like, God damn, that'll look good in pictures. Is that the same fender that's on it right now? Still? Of course. <laughs> dude, nobody a, can tell dude, in pictures. If you want to know, dude, if you want to know how good of a body man Casey is, he took a, a fender that looks like you stuck it in a trash I'll, packer. I'll post, I have and he left that it. fender on there, even though he has a spare black one in his garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. No, it's not pretty. Don't look at it too hard. <laughs> no, the black one is a little rusted. Well, it doesn't matter. But, All right. So anyway. this is like near and dear to me. Do you think it's important to have a presentable drift car? Ten, uh, well, I should say 100%. It's actually, it's actually to me. <laughs> wow. To me, drifting is like 50% looks of the car and like 50% skill. Like you can go out on the track and but bomb your lap as long as you got a cool looking car. People are going to be like, yeah. Still looks good in pictures. Still looks good, <laughs> man. You, you almost drifted that corner. <laughs> <laughs> So I fair, <laughs> I fair on the other side of that, which is if all you have is an E36, it doesn't have a front bumper or fenders, but you want to go drive, go fucking drive. Well, of course. Well, yeah. I mean, not I'm not saying, bags, but I'm not saying that you not saying only that you guys have to have as, a good looking car. As soon car. as you can, make it look good, please. I'm not saying that it has to be a look, good looking car. It's just it helps. No, I agree. Uh, no, I agree. Yeah. Like, well, like, dude, look at my car. Like, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it definitely is all one thing. You know, like it's I have a theme. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't saying you guys thought that, but there are people on the internet that are the other way where they don't think it's important at all, or you have people that like think that it's more important to have like three piece hot boy Johnny's than to have like a proper setup car. Like they ain't done. I mean, a, they haven't done a bolts check in six months, but they got three piece <laughs> wheels that leak down while they go on a drive. It's fucking crazy to me. You I know, I don't give two shits about that stuff. Yeah, me either. I mean, as long as you just need to have a, a clean looking car on the track with a, a thought process of your a vision. vision. I would love yeah. to have three piece wheels, but I don't think it's necessary whatsoever what, for drifting. Yeah. Why? Why? Just because they look good, it's more. It's more drama. It's more work. It's harder to get people to mount tires to them. If you scrub them, then you're. Then now what? Now you got to fix three piece wheels where like I go spend eighty dollars and buy two more. Yeah, but you. It's just the style of it. Like that's all I. That's all I can say <laughs> for it. It's nothing that it doesn't make sense. It's spending more money, and you deal with more issues. Spending but more money on cool. something that I don't doesn't care. Help Sounds like you. marriage, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know you're married. Gotcha, bitch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> kidding, Jacqueline. We're kidding. We're kidding. <laughs> He's really not. I'm just not going to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Caleb. Maybe <laughs> ten years down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> All right, so we we brought this up multiple times, but um, do you think it's necessary to actually have like a clean shop? I feel like there's a difference acceptable. between a clean shop and an organized shop. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a clean shop, but organization is key. So if you know where your stuff's at. So like, as long as you can find a tool within a couple of seconds. Yeah, not, not like I just set this down and it's in this pile of shit over here. I don't know where it went. Dude, what was the deal with the 17 Beats millimeter on the eight. other day? I don't know. Dude, <laughs> dude, no, we were doing breaks and we lost the 17 millimeter. Dude, and his shop, it, dude, he's kidding. His shop is really clean and very organized, but somehow we yeah. lost a 17 millimeter between me and him, like just standing around the car like five times. Yeah. <laughs> More than five. Yeah, it was maybe. like 10. I was, dude, dude, I was so pissed happened, by the time though. it was over. Yeah, yeah. And then it, it was like always under something, you, you know? Wait, what? It was like always under something. It was like underneath oh, yeah. the thing, you know? <laughs> It'd be <laughs> sitting under the <laughs> impact. <laughs> yeah. Where do you see the drift scene as a whole? Not like one, not Hot Boy Johnny guys versus the, like drifting as a whole. Where do you see that going in the next, let's say five to 10 years? Mm. I don't feel like it's a, 
it's not going where I feel like it should be going. If that makes sense. I agree. Um, what do you mean? By I feel that, like, it, I feel like it's, there's not enough grassroots people jumping into the whole drift scene to sustain it. It's cause, I feel, it's cause people are gatekeepers. I, I feel oh, like yeah. it's a, uh, it's, it's, a little and bit takeovers. Of a, it's a little bit of a dying breed. Dude, takeovers are... Oh, wait, I'm sorry, what? It's a little bit of a dying breed. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of people getting into it and being like, yeah, I want to drift where it, it was... What do you think's causing years that, ago. though? Do you think it's because of, like, tire tariffs or, like, just just the enthusiasm for it? Uh, I Actually, I think it's more of the track owners. Do you think be you're honest squeezing you. as much out of it's being it's, greedy? Yeah, just... For the most give, part. give me the money, all of it. I want it all. I don't care if it, it you go broke trying to do this. Uh, don't care if it's a hobby of yours that you enjoy. I want your money, all of it. You What's know? the most annoying example you've like? Yeah, like you've had of that? The Clarksville hike. Clarksville, but, dude. <laughs> that's why I, I stopped seriously, going okay. to Clarksville. So seriously, I went there and I was like, "It's we're just gonna go have a fun day." Uh, I was driving. I had my wife and my two kids with me. It seriously cost me two hundred and fucking eighty dollars just to, to drive, get everybody to drive on a circle skid pad, so that I could take my wife on a ride, take my two kids on the rides, and I could drive two hundred and fucking eighty dollars. It's ridiculous on a yeah on a skid pad basically a, yeah. yeah a figure eight yeah. piece well, of shit. Kevin, throw an aerial view of Clarksville <laughs> just so they get the gist. Of I'm that, not saying we that talked about it a lot. Clarksville could be a fun little place to go drive at. If it went back to the older days of when it was actually cost effective to go there and actually yeah, yeah. learn and Dude, it was drive. like sixty bucks Wait, to drive all day. Didn't yeah. Kevin say something about they like there's someone's investing in it or something bought it, someone bought it, they're adding to it or something like that? There is supposedly some in talk in house talk of they're gonna add some sort of a an extra spot, which I think would would make it better. That would make and it a lot charge you benefit. fifty dollars more yeah. on top of the eighty dollars they're already charging and you or gotta, ninety or whatever. You gotta it is. you gotta pay for mm-hmm. it somehow, but I think they need to do like advertisement or something that or like or like dude, honestly, you know what a really they good think move just would making be making a Facebook like event post. You know is what would be a really good thing is not. for let's say a hundred and twenty dollars you bought a Z car and you did GK Tech and you did regular safety features and then for 120 or 150 dollars a day <clears throat> you could go out there and you could teach people to drift and that would get them into the sport and it would pay because you know you get, oh yeah 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 so like you could a, do something like that something similar to what uh what barry does with his uh beginners yeah because he yeah. doesn't he doesn't even have a track he just goes to other tracks no. and makes it work so these track owner guys could do it I think there's just a stigma around drifting, and I think a lot of it stems from the takeover people, man. Yeah, you're you know? not going to tear up my asphalt. Yeah, yeah. If you were an event host, what would you? What would your approach be towards it? Like, what would you want to see out of it, dude? I'd want that, from I'd, I'd want that shit to grow. To yeah. be honest with you, I, I wouldn't. So I feel like you've got to start a any anything business wise. You got to be ready for the loss at the beginning. Right. For sure. Of it's, course. It's gonna yeah, take, yeah. It's probably going to take you like two years before you actually start making money. But that's any business. But like period, really. You got to look at it as a business standpoint within after those two years, you grow this, you grow this uh, track, this drift scene in this track. People are going to start talking about it and start bringing their friends. Next thing you know, you're going to have enough people there to actually support the event versus you losing money on the event. Word of mouth is the best advertisement. Oh, 100%. Yep, for sure. Dude, or there's what other happened to outside West complications. setting up Twin Fountains? What um, happened? I think that's going to be a struggle. Twin bus. Fountains. Did what? he say no? No, but I, I see it, it's going to take a long time for West to get that done. Um, that dude, seriously, what he told me was, "You're not drifting on my on my lot because you're going to tear up my asphalt." Was the hundred percent comment he <laughs> what, made? Okay, hold on, back up. What is, what is this? I, I don't know anything about this. It's right out. Okay, do you know where Dollar General is on two thirty one? Okay, which that, one? <laughs> the the, the one, one closest like, to work. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right with, behind with that is a Cadet, racetrack. Right? It's a go kart track, is what it really, really? is. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they do Corvette the racing fuck? there. They do Miata days there. They do all this kind of like. They actually do know, like grip driving stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And they let Wes go for like an hour, but he's, it was. He's a, went twice now. And uh, mm-hmm. now, see, I, now, now I know why I didn't know about it. So I would have been like, hey, man, why don't you ask him about all of us going one day? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that makes more sense. I went in there in a suit and tie. Then I went in there in shorts and flip flops. And both times, whenever I mentioned drifting, he told me to go fuck myself. Yeah, I mean, in, in like, all holy shit, purpose. like, dude, like it was weird. I, you know, because I'm a businessman. I've been doing. I've been in the car business and retail for 15 years. And so, dude, I literally stuck my hand out to shake his hand. He started to shake my hand, and I mentioned drifting mid handshake mm -hmm. he put his hand down wouldn't even look me in the eyes like a coward it was crazy it was i got crazy. All, i got all the way with him to how head? much it was going to cost to rent that track for a day and then he asked me what i wanted to do at the very end of the conversation i told him drifting he's like no you're not doing that not on my track so that weird. doesn't make sense dude so i probably added insult to injury and told him well for an abandoned racetrack you're not going to make any fucking money <laughs> <laughs> oh now actually I, I remember this story yeah, that's yeah, yeah. i was uh, i was a little pissed off because we made it all the I'll way to the you. conversation of this is how much it's going to cost you and then no no you're not doing that on my track it's so weird dude it's like just, what it doesn't make sense though like it doesn't cause that much damage no not like hardly at all the only thing that causes damage on drifting is if you're sitting still burning tires yeah Technically speaking, you're adding rubber to the asphalt drifting. Track owners, if, if there's a track <clears throat> owner watching this, comment below and let us know your opinion on that. We need some we'll shit have... in Middle Tennessee right now. Yeah. 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 And dude, I, I looked over all over the. Well, help uh, us grow our channel. We'll fucking do it. Yeah. We'll buy. If someone can help us grow our channel, we'll buy a fucking racetrack. We'll buy that racetrack. Because Wes said it was fun. I said it was a cool track and, oh, yeah. and and somebody told me that that place was for sale my mom told me she knew somebody that was like trying to sell that land no. but it's not zoned out of county so there's a oh. 90 decimal uh noise ordinance that you have to stay under i'm good i'm good i yeah. mean my car's yeah. quiet so i mean i think we would all get away with it we would have to have like you know if west can drift there <laughs> we can drift. <laughs> <like that. laughs> well caleb can't drift there that's the problem is caleb's corvette can't go i don't know i think be well Just, between the two of them they're dude what you should do no dude caleb's uh, corvette dude remember the night I, we I, stood I, at your house Dude, my brother, like, my brother, could you not just throw away. a muffler on it and it would quiet it down enough? Maybe. I mean, I would Dude, probably I would do that. Put a fucking V band at the end. That way you can just swap it out with a fucking muffler whenever you have to go to that track. And then Dude, what was the deal with that? What was the, what was the big the big dilemma when we first talked about Twin Fountains? We were all like, everybody was down. We, like, dude, I would have, I would have stuck like a, like an auto zone fart can over my downpipe that was at the time sticking out of my hood to go yeah. over there and race. One of us wasn't down. They were like, I didn't do all this shit to my car where I couldn't put, a, where I have to run a muffler. I don't remember who was it. Mr. Giraffe. Huh? It was Chris. Yeah. I oh, <laughs> I love you. That was so dumb though, man. <laughs> Fuck, man. Everybody was like, dude, yeah, a racetrack. You're like, I'm not doing mufflers. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like dude his car does sound really cool i'm not talking shit it was just i remember i thought dude i, could, I would have swore it was brandon no could have swore brandon has a muffler on his car not anymore though we bullied him out of it right no he still has a muffler he put mufflers back on his drift car he has a if i'm not mistaken he's got a resonator and a fart can out the back Damn. i mean it's not really a muffler but it does quieten the car down quite a bit uh, okay actually i wanted to know this so i saw i was watching one of taylor ray's videos and he for the the headlights it's just leds behind a lens is that like completely normal for F, like fd cars and shit to do that i don't know if it's normal for regular fd cars but i would imagine that he's not the only one that's trying to take weight out of it and the factory headlights have big on a Corvette have big like plastic things that hold a, a bulb and a, and a housing. And then there's three. Oh my God. Who's got the, okay. I cannot remember. Who's got the S 15 with the LEDs in it. He, he did the same thing. Alec Honadel. Yep. I love you. If you're <laughs> but he did, he did the same thing, but this it was so cool. 90% of it was because of the cost of the S 15 headlights though. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Honadel is S 14. No, wait, well, then it wasn't Honadel then. Maybe it's Odibachi. Mm -mm, I don't think so. Man, I cannot remember his name to save my life right now. 15 front? I don't know who yeah. it is. I don't know. I mean, is it I, MS Spec? Dude, I can't remember. I just remember. MS Spec? Well, how remember, the fuck you say that? I remember watching a random YouTube video that came up on, and it was going over his car, and I, I can't remember whose car it was, though, just to be honest with you. Alec Honadale's car is like that. Up. He's got S14 lenses over top of, like, some light bars, mm -hmm. and his car is so cool. I love his car. It's like 
you know, 1100 horsepower turned down. It's fucking pink bright <laughs> colors. Dude, he's he's even handsome, dude. His fucking car is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. I love watching him drive. <laughs> <The fuck? laughs> what? <laughs> I'm allowed to fangirl. Fuck he's you. handsome. He's so handsome. Oh my he, god. Kevin, put a picture of him. Is he not handsome? Look at him. Look Just how handsome that guy is. <laughs> yeah. Wish I had this stubble. I have this ugly. Here, Kevin, beard put now. him over top of me, right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow make him hold, uh, like, like reach over and hold him for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> if he does, it gives you face. Just like this. <laughs> ready, ready. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious stupid uh, all right. oh. anyways make sure to take that out no leave. no that's it you keep that shit Kevin. <laughs> no, no i'm kidding i don't care all right here you go you can fangirl now about jimmy oaks i know you love him <laughs> well no i'm the, in a no, group chat with him so the, mm. the people have been wanting some e36 talk so um jimmy oaks his e36 that he's building into a track car to have a right hand drive drift car basically what are your thoughts on it? Because you're like all 240. I mean, I'm not all 240, but I'm mostly 240. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like honestly, that's Bulletproof. like that's a real thing though. You start buying S chassis, and then suddenly you're like, it's life a cancer, is, bro. You, you like can't. Twenty of them. You can't like do. Dude, <laughs> dude, just so everybody on here knows, he hasn't started his FC yet, but FCs are the same thing. Dude, you end yeah, up I'm like twenty five. I'm gonna end up in a rabbit parts. hole. In oh that. yeah, yeah. So it's the same. Thing. I've already but contemplated, no. dude. Whenever um, Hunter was selling his the the tan chassis, yeah, I contemplated buying it. It's for five hundred dollars. So I was like, hmm, I don't need that at all, but I want it just because it's an FC. <laughs> Owning so, an S chassis or FC, <laughs> that's what it's like. But no, I don't hate on BMW. Gotcha, but bitch. Like, they're they're fine. It's me that he's kind of referring to. I don't really like E36s. I don't think they're the really only thing that you need to do with any kind of a BMW is take the drivetrain out and just chuck it in the damn garbage. Yeah, I agree. Like the whole drivetrain is just shit on those cars. Like they suck. Put a two J in the it. The M54 is not bad. Done. Yeah, that one's not so bad. But the rest of them suck. I do agree though. That they're not the most reliable engines. I know Jimmy Oaks talks what? pretty highly of them. Dude, what's the motor <laughs> in the in the couple. green in the green four door and the blue four door that go to Clarksville? What are the motors in those? Is that the N54? I don't the think straight so. pipe car. Oh my god. I have no idea. He's so nice. I, I like him. Come I like him. But. but dude, it's so loud. <laughs> it is. Dude, yeah, it <laughs> it's is. so loud, bro. Like, it's like, you know, like if a Mustang or a Camaro gets on it, we're all like, hell yeah. It's fucking BMW. BMWs <laughs> dude, have that like, it's like weird, this, unique like, sound. Put a fucking muffler you know? on it already. Yeah, yeah, dude. You're like standing in the pits <laughs> talking to your girlfriend. You're like, sorry. What you say? <laughs> yeah. So loud. <laughs> Taylor Ray and uh, Ben got twin BMWs and they went mobbing in the mountains. So I watched that video and I just don't like BMWs enough to like really get involved. <laughs> but I did watch it and it is a cool car and it is cool all the shit that he showed people on how to fix that car because there was that car was that like video was that car was like watch. a lemon, you know? And so, yeah, because yeah. he couldn't figure it out at first and he was then he was trying to go through it and then it was so weird because Josh told me he watched he was like, dude, that's a real thing on German cars. You have to marry the part to the ECU and if you buy a used one, you can't remarry it. Mm -hmm. And so. Yeah, so you could, what? Yeah, so they bought some piece for a for a Ford. I don't remember what it was. <clears throat> they bought some piece. The guy comes over and is like, "I've been trying to pair this for an hour. Is this a used part?" And they're like, "Well, yeah." And he goes, <laughs> "All right, we'll call him when you get a new one." And left. Josh said he was a dick. My turd bucket two forty. I don't run S thirteen headlights. Yeah. I'm not gonna buy those. Oh, dude, on the Chevy we headlights. Didn't talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have. We did um, uh, in like the first podcast, I think. We said something about it. Yeah, yeah, but I was just saying, well, he's on here now, so well, yeah. he didn't even say anything about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, sorry. The, <laughs> dude, one of the big centerpieces on Casey's car is that instead of using brick housing headlights or whatever the e-boys use now. It's like, what, 95 Chevy? Yeah, he used old, no, no, no. old. I thought it was cat eye headlights. No, they're like no. the old square brick headlights. Yeah, off, off of Django. Like, yeah. Ah, actually, they they are sense. they are okay. the identical yeah. headlights that are in Django right now. Nailed <laughs> <laughs> it! <laughs> oh, dude, you have never seen, dude. You think I make the 240 community upset because I like put hot rod stuff on an S chassis? Casey put fucking OBS 
Chevy headlights on his 240 and then posted them and dude it went like fucking viral people were furious <laughs> they were like they're like how dare you defile the royal S chassis with those Chevrolet headlights and I was like dude you know because I'm like dude I'm like yeah. a, I'm like an internet spook bro I like I'll like go like I'll like zoom in and see if your kid's ugly and shit like I'm fucking I'm savage bro so I'm like going to everyone and say something can't negative just reply to a comment oh, dude, yes, I gotta get the them all too. I gotta get them all and I gotta find out everything about you if you have like a hundred thousand followers or like you're really important uh, maybe i won't go after you or like make fun of your kids but if you're like some dude got nine friends and an ugly kid and you got some shit to say about a car mm. i've seen it <laughs> <laughs> spent 30 days in facebook jail all right <laughs> i'm finally out post a comment now <laughs> yeah yeah i usually do a thanos gif but yeah my car is like a hodgepodge of just random parts yeah but it's so cool looking though I mean, you know, and that's the thing that makes dude. that is honestly the most annoying thing is that there are people out there that are such like purists that they'll get mad, mm -hmm. right? That his car is like a purpose built car. And like, we obviously take a lot of time to make sure our cars are presentable. And I would, I would dare say more than 70% of the drift people do. Oh yeah. We're yeah. more, we're more like, no, let's don't ship it out half ass. Let's put it all the way together and get it right. And then we'll go, you know, like it'll be two or three more hours. We'll get it done. And yeah. I don't, I feel like other people aren't like that. Uh, no, I feel and, like a lot of people that's because they stemmed from the stance community and they just, they got tired of the bullshit in the stance community. So yeah, yeah. they just kind of carried it over. But I will They're say used you, to, it's like a second nature for them to go wash their car before an event. If you want to see some pretty nice drift, drift cars, um, Final bow, final bow. Mm, you, you guys need to go to Drift Indy. It's a little bit easier to get into. Oh, yeah, dude. I've been wanting to go there. Dude, there are some nice-ass yeah. cars sitting there. Really? They and they are about, like, stance cars, but still drifting. Still got some functionality. Like, the lower you are, the better. Oh, really? Hell yes. It, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> Do you watch Drift Masters at all? Um, no, not really. Okay. Well, I, I watched it. I watched the... Last one, the championship. Warhouse right. Rifter. What was his name? Uh, Peter Visick. No, is is the other the other guy? I don't what? know the other driver for Warhouse anymore. I it was James Dean for. Yeah, I don't know the new guy. Well, okay, so he he doesn't drive for them anymore. But yeah, James Dean is who I was thinking. Sorry. Wow, fucking. Them. That was the last one that I watched. Was uh, best drifter in the world, man. I, I watched him like destroy I, dude, I his car on like, Visick and James Dean are like right there between each other. They've got to be, dude. Mm. They drove identical when they were here. They did. I was going to say with uh, Peter, um, did you see the YouTube where he did the sim driver versus? Dude, yes. That's one. That Dude, was one that of the best that, drifting videos yes. to so come cool. out in our generation. I swear. I was, yeah, I I was like, yes, finally, the, the gamers get a chance. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Dude me on my couch. So many it should questions. have been me. It should have been me. <laughs> Think about how many times have some has somebody talked about that, like, you know, in their garage when they're just bullshitting yeah. and working on a car? It doesn't transfer, yeah. bro. Dude, that answered every fucking question that every drifter's had. Denofa won the last round? Was it the last round? Round before that? I think it was the last round. I think it, I think was, it was the last round. So, what, jumble, what, so what about that, internet? All right. We were asking... We were we were asking earlier how come Adam couldn't win, and then they were like, "It's the car," and then whatever. I understand he's got it's a lot the more same fucking car. Okay, right, but so what, okay, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not hating I on know, LZ. At I all. know, I know, no, it doesn't matter. He's in dude, like, he, dude, he's no, gonna like put horns bullshit. on us, and we he's gonna not, like make us uh, look like demons. That. We should not have to be sitting here <laughs> biting our tongue. I'm we're not. talking about the dude that is like the face of fucking drifting. Fuck you, I don't care. We'll I talk agree. about it if we want to. I agree. I agree. I agree. I was saying that, like, Pete, all right, so the the argument was, like, how come LZ wins Clutch Kicker so much? I'm explaining, honestly, for the audience, I'm explaining this to Casey because you're not really seeing the behind-the-scenes stuff that me and him are going through. Dude, we got, like, 1.5 million views on one of them. There was, like, 25,000 comments. So like, most of them were, like, fuck. You asshole! You don't know anything about <laughs> oh LZ. God. I know about his third nipple. You're like people are going crazy, you know. And so, <laughs> right there. <laughs> so, so, but the but what I so one of the comments that I responded to that got a lot of hits was I was like, dude, I'm not saying he's a shit driver. All I'm saying is that Denofa wins a lot, and he doesn't win 
he didn't even qualify in the round that I was talking about. And so this guy's like, yeah, well, Denofa's had a lot more seat time. And it, and so my response was like, dude, yeah, okay, I understand. But at that level, at th that is, I mean, dude, that's the mecca. It's top that's so it, dude, tier. That's, so that's, I feel like Denofa's had more seat time in the Mustang. Okay, Other right, than branching right, out to other countries, right that's there. top tier. I agree, but here's here was my point: is that at that level, you can't make excuses for this person, right? No, no. I, dude, I don't even know Chelsea Denofa. I've seen his interviews, and honestly, some of them, he's like, it's almost like I think it's just his personality, which is fine. But I'm, he just seems disinterested in having a conversation with someone. It could have been because it's Aaron Losey, and he's a very polarizing person. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking shit. I'm just saying, okay, but. So I don't like him as much as I like LZ. I want LZ we to get win. Compared to, but he, to Aaron but, Lossi the but, most, right? I feel That's I feel the ironic. same. Yeah. So, but so the the what I said to this person was like, okay, but at that level of competition, this is not pro am. This is not like, oh yeah, well he's been driving for ten years and he's only been driving for one. Denof has been driving for what three years on the RTR now. It's about three or four. It sounds about right. Yeah. I think it's three or four years. Four. All right. But at that level, it's like, dude. Get it together, you know. Yeah. Like you're a, you're a, you're it. You're the top dude. You're the you're at the very pinnacle of our sport, mm -hmm. and people are like making excuses on your behalf as to why you can't win. I'm not saying that it doesn't play a role, but I was saying that you shouldn't make excuses. Like they both drive the same car. There's he even had the more experienced driver set up his Mustang the same way, mm -hmm. and still didn't even qualify. And so I was like, you know, so what I is it? I, I personally feel, though, to be honest with you, Denofa could win more if he would just turn it down just a little bit. I also, I also think, <laughs> yeah, that, dude, I is, think, dude, I think he's like he's like me. He's he gets in the car and dude, he leaves, and as soon as he leaves, it's he's got one arm on the wheel, and somebody else grabs the wheel and starts driving with him, and it's like that person is just like, dude, I'm gonna fucking drive this car, fuck, you know, like it makes him awesome to watch. But I think he, I agree with you, if he would take it down from 15 to like 11, he yeah, would do just, like way just better. Take it down yeah. Just a little bit, yeah, just a hair. He would probably do I mean, the, the, his line would smooth up. Yeah, in the judge's eyes. Yeah, but dude, I mean, he's but so then, but so then, what do you do? Do you do you take away from the interesting part? Because if you took him from fifteen to eleven, he's not going to be doing a hundred and eighteen mile entries True. backwards. Entries. Yeah, dude. Then, I mean, then you're going to take away all of us watching it because we <laughs> right so do so yeah. where's the balance dude i watch what it for do? Denofa right, because dude, he's always yeah. like he carries him and lz carry like, fd yeah there's like did you see how they put fucking matt field as took over the instagram stories for fd today mm -mm. uh no oh god <laughs> I, I didn't get on instagram all that, day because that, of it. it i've seen one where it's like the back of his race and suit and they're like it's posted from formula drift and i don't i just don't like I don't know. I just feel like as a company, you would want someone that little kids and 14 and 15 year olds could aspire to and a company instead, like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But instead you have you Matt field who's like, next... at, 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 yeah, he's got to be the <laughs> most polar. I was trying to think, <laughs> I was trying to think of somebody else who's more polarizing them. Who else? That's it. He's just the loudest. And so why would you want that guy to be the face of your thing? Why wouldn't you do it to LZ? Little kids already want to be that motherfucker. Yeah, really. You know? No. I just don't get it. Throw you know? Or the most humble one fucking... Um, or yeah, Hurst. Uh, right? You get him. He's God, awesome. I, I'm blanking. Trust me. I'm in the same boat. <sighs> You're both blanking. What's we are. <laughs> but, uh, Rockstar Supra. What the but fuck? Osbo. Go Osbo. God yes. damn. But going back Sorry. to the LZ uh, Denofa Stupid. thing, there, there's a reason that Vaughn stepped down and is no longer driving. Right. Right. He, he's got faith in both of those drivers to win. Oh, I agree. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so I mean, Denofa can company. Win. Oh, definitely. But I agree with you. He needs to turn it from 15 down to like 11. Oh, I feel like LZ yeah. could win too if he would go a little bit harder i think i think lz is a little soft too soft and denofa is a little too hard we meet in the middle somewhere yeah i agree i think the best thing for lz would be seat time in that car because they're like you know when like you know when like the people online went like okay remember when taylor hole sold his cadillac mm -hmm. yeah do you remember when well, one of the top comments on that thread was like oh everyone in here saying this car is overpriced wouldn't even know how to drive this car <laughs> Yeah, dude, it's an 1100 horsepower car that has shopping cart angle. Anybody that knows what they're doing behind a wheel of a drift car could drive that car. I don't care what oh, anybody yeah. says. 
Now, cheater cars. An RTR is not the same thing, I don't think, because they put Cletus McFarlane yeah, in Yeah, I was going to say the Cletus video where he was like, it, yeah. you got to drive the car. It's not a car that's just yeah, driven. Right. You, you are I think, I it's an on and off switch. Yeah, I think that there is something to the RTR being a little bit more challenging to drive because. That might be key point why Adam LZ wins all of his. Um, clutch kickers events. Versus, so that's what we think. Versus the. I literally, my FD personal is. opinion is, I think it simply comes down to turbo versus NA. I don't think so. I, think I don't think, it, I think well, it's car along setup with his more nerves than and, and stupid shit like that. But he can get over those. Because well, I, I seriously feel like he's he's a good driver. It's oh, just he's killer. Yeah. He he knows his car mm-hmm. way more than he'll ever know the RTR cars. Yeah. And I think stepping from his cars to the RTR cars is r- really messing with him. That's that's my opinion. Yeah. Mm. I, no, I agree. I, I completely agree. But I could be 100% wrong, too. You well, know. just so you know, make sure when you leave here, <laughs> deactivate your Facebook, turn your Instagram off. You're going to get death threats. I love <laughs> it. They're going to hate you. You're not allowed to point out anything about Vaughn, Denofa, Osbo, LZ, or Taylor Ray. If you point out anything negative about those people, <laughs> they fucking hate your guts. Oh my god, doesn't well, even matter. I'm dead. Yeah, uh, Nate, you want my logins? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> that would be awesome. So, <laughs> cracks knuckles. Oh, this is gonna be good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So on this video that Dawson made of me, it's me talking about. Honestly, it was me discussing an argument I had with uh, Julie. How do you pronounce her name? Groff? Groof? I think. Koopa Koopa. I think. All right. Anyway, I don't know her name. So anyways, her and Ryan Cabin, we started arguing about something. And both of those people have other people build their cars, which is fine. That is fine. Okay. I don't hate anybody because you like wrote a check to fix your car. If we all had the cash... That's what we'd all do. Two thousand percent. You know, I yeah. Like, I'm not Nobody, hating. Yeah, <laughs> dumb. But, but the difference is, is that we're not punching down on those people for doing that. It's the other way around. People who write checks typically want to punch down on the guy who's just like welding shit in his garage, trying to make it work, doing the most you can yes. with what you have. Yeah. So that was the argument. Well, dude, some of the top comments were like, "Who gives a fuck?" Right. <laughs> and one of the one of the comment that has the most likes on that video was me responding saying exactly 342,068 people and counting, right? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that audio is actually turning into I know, like I know. It has a, a uh, viral audio itself of just him speak. People are using it as an audio for their video. Oh yeah. wow. 6160 people have sent that to someone else. And it has 25,000 likes, 2,400 and whatever, 24,005. So it's like a lot of people agree with the point of view that someone who paid for their own car doesn't get to punch down on someone who built their car from the ground, right? Because that's typically what's going on. So I just wanted to point that out, that 350,000 fucking people agree with me. So go fuck yourself. (laughs) I don't really think it matters, though, to be honest with you. I don't think it matters either. I don't really care what anyone thinks about me. If I did, my car wouldn't look the way it looks. But it's no. just one of those things where, like, all these people were getting in the comments. Like, 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 so one of the most common things that would happen is somebody would get in there and be like, no, I'm going to talk that shit. And then, you know, I'd go to, I'd go to their Instagram. They'd have nine followers and a fucking grom. <laughs> yeah. Like, shut up. All right. So on this one, this is the one. This is like this. This is like, honestly, this is like the most wholesome moment in the whole podcast. Boyer is like saying, Honestly, one of the most annoying things about the car community is that people turn it into a personality, right? And so we kind of agree with him on that because it's like cars are, kind of are my personality. Like I don't really have 100%. any, you know, like I don't really have other things. Just don't force right, don't whatever force your bullshit is. Your uh, opinion on is on anyone else, else or the car community. Well, yes. so Boyer was saying basically that, but somebody was saying in the comments that like, oh well, you know, the car, car. Oh no. <laughs> It Just went away. <laughs> See, this is why I need my fucking phone. All right, so it's not technologically. Yeah. Advanced. All right, so 2000 G3, which is not a real car, said car podcast is the pinnacle of making cars your personality. And then obviously that's a very unfair framing of the context. And so I said, firstly, that's a pretty unfair framing of this concept uh, of this context. And either you're stupid or being intentionally disingenuous. Either way, relax, bud. It's two grassroots car guys talking. It can't hurt you. 
And then he said, I was just pointing out the irony. I thought it was funny, which made me feel bad because I was like, sorry. <laughs> but it's like, dude, I, just, I, I spend all day on the internet defending ourselves. And then it's like yeah. someone will say something and I'll just be like, oh, I'll fucking nuke you, man. You know, like, you know like, whatever. <laughs> oh, dude, this one's perfect. Okay, so this is the one where Boyer is talking in the episode and he's talking about because obviously I don't like EV. I, I don't like anything about it. And so he's like, so basically what you're telling me is that EV is the devil. Well, the way Dawson clips it is it sounds like we're saying EV is the devil. <laughs> so I'll just go ahead and say it. They are. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, agree. I don't like <laughs> EV. All right. I, I, I understand the performance aspect of it. Like when they put it on the P1 and some really high performance cards. I get that when you add it for yeah, performance. Let's, let's go 50 miles and then have to recharge. Yeah, I don't understand yeah, it. No. Right. So this guy, this guy says, uh, his name is Pantheon Holding, which... What? I don't know. Anyways, he says, QEV fanboys spitting soy out of their noses <laughs> before schooling, in quotation marks, y'all on proper think. And then I said, they're not in here yet, but you're right. And then, dude, literally this dude, and dude, honestly, I, didn't, I wanted to put all this in here, but it would, it would have been like 15 minutes all by itself. Southern Traveler 82, <laughs> dude. Dude, he is a listen, listen, Casey. Don't laugh yet. He's got a hard hat and a vest. Okay, so he's he's like that's all. He, I don't know what he's doing for traveling, right? But he says no. We are just laughing with you, uh, laughing at you with your scared little opinions, trying to justify a technology that is outdated and already surpassed by something newer. I figured you all might as well start telling us how dial up internet work how dial up internet is better. And then dude, that Pantheon guy completely ignored him and says circle of drift. There he is. <laughs> dude, it was awesome, dude. So, okay, so I went back and forth with that Impeccable. guy a couple of times and he was basically saying that me and you are spreading EV propaganda about trying not to, to wow. say yeah, like saying that we're like saying like they shouldn't do EV like as if we have some sort of influence on the EV market. Yeah, right. I don't know if you know this stupid ass, but Elon Musk is in that market. I don't know if you think we have that kind of reach, but we don't. Yeah, so, Elon's, Elon's got that on lock right yeah, now. Yeah, man. You know, he's going <laughs> <Stupid>. space. <laughs> Thistle the Pickle Whistler or something. I don't know what his name is. I can't pronounce it. So he says, LZ this, LZ that. you just using his name to boost your page. Chill out with all the LZ shit. We get it. You're a fan. We are too. And if we... And he has a typo. And we go to LZ channel if we want to hear a, a boot what he's up to so that, Stupid. <laughs> so that has nine likes which means at least nine people or at least nine of his followers don't have very many brain cells yeah think that he's right and so like i said earlier i i like came down hard on a subscriber earlier because i thought he was being mean but i think he was actually just being like neutral so I let him off easy the first time, and I said, it's a drift podcast, which means we're going to talk about drifting. LZ is at the forefront of drifting. We're going to talk about him. Sorry. And then has 25 likes. And then he said, I get you're going to talk about him, but don't post about him every second post. It would be every other post. And then he said, you're dick riding. So, <laughs> so I said, actually, we have 56 posts and only at the time it was only three of them were about LZ, which would be like 6.78% of our God, damn. You did get down to wow, five, you went, that's oh, I'm telling, listen, only 6.78% of our content has been about LZ and we've had 144,000% growth of the past seven weeks. So you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, you and your nine subscribers. The very first TikTok video we posted was about training a monkey to take apart an LS, and yeah. it's at what, 600,000? Yeah. 500,000, something like that? Piss off. Yeah. So, anyways, he obviously didn't respond to that. And then, uh, so that was pretty funny. Xander the Pickle Whistler. That's what I'm going to call him. <laughs> that's not his actual name, but that's what I'm going to call him. <laughs> Um, just call him Mr. Pickles. Pickle, right? Okay, this is on another LZ post, right? Because again, there's only four, so it's really easy to find these. It seems they, like y'all are the ones that love LZ. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we love LZ too, but y'all are the one dick riding for sure. And so, one NZS underscore SZN1. I don't know, he doesn't have a profile picture. He said, Y'all steady have someone's name in your mouse. 
get a life for real dog and then he put a podcast is yeah we talk about topics so like i always do because i'm an internet spook i go to his profile (laughs) and i i do a little review to see if he has like cars and once again it's like you know stupid shit that he's posted has it's now there's no like there's no platform. There's no, at least when you go to mine, even though it's kind of convoluted, it's either drift cars or memes, you know, like there's only two things. It's niche I post. down at least. Yeah. Like I have two things that I post. He has nothing and he only has nine followers. And so I said, uh, yeah, this is about the GTR. This is because we said we like at dude, Adam's LZ, Adam LZ's GTR is oh, yeah. like, that's like the nicest GTR. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, it's mm. fucking awesome, man. They're from, from top to bottom. Awesome. Right. And I said to him, I said, are you triggered because we like GTRs or because you only have nine followers? And I did like the little cry emoji. (laughs) 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 And he says, your social media presence is smaller than your ego. And this was a little bit after. And I think, no, yeah, this is, yeah, because we, this percentage is not as big. And so uh, this is after, this is before we posted another one, which is why the percentages are different. So for the audience listening, they're like saying, oh, the the numbers are different. He works backwards. (laughs) Yeah. Well, when, when you're going back through them, you find, you know, you find (laughs) the old, you know, all right. So he says, your social media presence is smaller than your ego. And I said, and yet larger than you you on both fronts. And I did like the little handshake emoji. I said, we watch our data like hawks. In case you were curious, we only talk about YouTubers a total of 5.56% out of all content produced in the last seven weeks with an average growth rate of 144,000%. So less than 6% of our growth is due to covering LZ or any YouTuber for that matter. Anyways, we hope you and your nine supporters see this next Sunday. <laughs> Anyways. So. You sound like such a salesman. <laughs> What a fucking cunt, though. I mean, yeah. honestly, you know, <laughs> I just don't. Shit. I don't understand it, dude. Like, <laughs> when is the last time that you talked with your buddies about drifting and Adam LZ, James Dean, or Chelsea Nanofa didn't come up? Tell me. I'll wait. Yeah, I, I, this is when we need know. the cricket one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Gotcha, bitch. That'll work. <laughs> but I mean, it's true and I'm not and like, dude, and the, and the problem with the internet is, is that when you clip that, they're going to think that I think that, I, that we think that those are the best drifters. And that's not what I'm saying, mm-hmm. but they are at the forefront of drifting. And dude, like it or not, this is a drift podcast. We're going to fucking talk about them, mm-hmm. you know, because that's the point of the podcast is so the little guy gets his drift news, you know, we condense a lot of the content that is put out there on YouTube and stuff like that into an hour to two hour piece of content so not a lot of people have all the time in the world (laughs) to go watch every (laughs) yeah (laughs) to watch every fucking youtube video and sometimes they enjoy just listening about it all right so sideways uh says checkbook builds and he does like the little face emoji like face plan emoji Mm -hmm. okay so well, I'll just read what I said first because I still stand by this. I said, there's nothing wrong with writing a check. We ain't got to lie. We would all do that if we had the funds. It's when the checkbook guys or professional guys punch down on the little guy that we aren't for. Less hate, more car people. And what I meant by that is, and, and so the, another guy after that said that he thinks it happens the other way. You know, what do you guys think about that? Actually, that's a good topic to spin off on for a second. I don't think it happens like that. No. I think the people that actually make their shit is gets more gets more hate than the people that pay anybody to do it. I agree. I completely agree. If you mm. build your own car in your own shop, there's always some dude. I, there's a there's a slight bit more of humbleness that comes with building your own car rather because than paying you didn't somebody know. else to do it. Well, it's like the first time you ever had to buy something yourself. It, there's a sense of like you want to care for it a lot more. Yeah, and than if someone gave it to if you. So, yeah, if someone just gifted it to you. How many times has someone gifted you a fucking toy or something when you were 10 and you lost it within a day but yeah, when you were you older bought and you bought your, your first favorite. pair of shoes oh, yeah. you know? dude you took care of those pair of shoes like they were the fucking gold oh definitely so okay I mean, the same yeah. difference so i will this, say there is there's probably a little bit more ghetto in the stuff that you make by yourself than what you know <laughs> yeah, for sure for sure that's and, and dude honestly that is the that is the conjoining problem is yeah. between those two things is that if you're building something like dude i am not I, dude he will tell you i'm not fucking around i got a box in my house okay a wooden box a, a crank came in it for one of my engines and it is full 
of just metal and junk and it's not organized and it's not you know it's got aluminum it's yeah. got steel stainless every car guy got one of those and it's got <laughs> big sharpie fucking letters that scrap on it and dude almost everything from my rear mount radiator came out of that box oh definitely yeah so like so but then i'll talk to someone right and i don't remember who it was or, uh, i mean it was the people that i was arguing with about the the ryan cabin and julie groff thing they're like shitting on my car because it wasn't done and the reason it wasn't done is because i tried to get out of the car business and that fucked me up for like almost eight months yeah, you know yeah. like that's what it was but like i didn't really want to tell them that that i missed you know like you don't ever want to like put out there that you missed you want to like only you only yeah. want to post your wins you yeah. know kind of thing well so i was like explaining that to them and they were like started shitting on my car saying that it was like shitty or blah blah or ugly or whatever and so i went after him pretty hard and that's where this kind of stemmed from was that and so this guy says the little guy in this situation would be the checkbook people, not the ones building it themselves. It takes a little knowledge to buy a car, but it takes all the knowledge to build it. Money doesn't make the bigger person. The build does, which I kind of agree with. I, I agree with him on. I agree with him that it takes more skill to buy it and install it than it does to just buy it and give it to a shop and have them put it in. Oh, 100%. <clears throat> You know? just, and like it, along with the people that are paying shops to build their cars, we're not talking about the fucking famous YouTubers that are paying like TJ Hunt and all them paying other people to build their cars. It's literally because they don't have time. Yeah, they're, they're building busy, a fucking business and they're trying to get rich at the same time. So, no, they're not going to fucking waste their time working on their own cars. This goes back I to wouldn't. the whole respect all builds. No matter who built it, who gives a shit, it's just, it's your build. Except are that, you, dude, are you like proud that, of your except build? Except that fucking RX-8. <laughs> except that car. Uh, yeah, no. Are you talking about yeah, the one that fell that off the trailer? <laughs> <laughs> dude, hey, somebody, go tag him. I want to get him on and get him to answer some fucking questions. Yeah, like dude. I saw some shitty welds in there. I'm like, dude, oh my God, how's that car even it's together? Not, dude, it doesn't even have a joint. No, it doesn't even no. have a joint. The bottom of the coilover is welded to the LCA. Yeah, yeah. the suspension. Dude, doesn't the only move. reason that I think <laughs> that, the only reason I think that he shouldn't that he should get less hate than ninety nine percent is because he doesn't drive it. He just trailers it. That's the only reason. If he drove it around, I'd be like, dude, you're going to kill somebody. You know? if, he drove it, if he drove it around, it would break in two seconds. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But I'm just saying, like, dude, like you, know that bump, you know that game gone. I have? The, 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 uh, it's called Simple Planes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you can make suspension parts on there. And I've done that before. Like you can't like it's not as it does it's not as fancy as it sounds. But I've had this game for a really long time. And like, dude, you can only build so many fucking airplanes. And so I started building like rock crawlers and stuff like that. And you have to like really try and and dude, it took me like a month to figure out all the joint spots that needed to happen in order for a suspension to work. And so I'm not very smart. I dude, I'm a fucking car salesman. And so like, dude, when I saw that dude's car, I was like. That's that does that's not gonna work. <laughs> and I watched him slam it up on a trailer, and I was like, "That's exactly what you need to do, except for replace the trailer with a brick wall." It was yeah. just cra it's crazy, dude. That's yeah, the that only that was, was like that's like the only type of stuff where I think um, respect all builds is not. It's when stance goes a little too far. Yeah, I think it's yeah. respect it, most because at that point, all you're well, doing is just building a. You're wasting so much money just for. I guess really it's just a cloud that there's nothing, there's no easier way to say that. Well, dude, the be, I mean, it's honestly, the best part is like, you know, Mike, you know who Mike Priz is? Mm. He's the dude that wrecked his white type X S 13 and then took it the to side a of it. Like crippled. Mm. It looks like it's fucking oh, caved in. And then drove and then it to an drove, event anyways. Yes. Okay. Right, so, so, I, know, the I, know, I know the vehicle you're talking. I don't know. He's going to come on. He said he would come on the podcast. He just got to get down to Tennessee. That guy went from i think eighteen thousand followers after that like dude that would be awful for me right <laughs> oh, like yeah. if i wrecked my car that would be like i would probably be like dude i'm taking four or five years off i don't even want to fuck with cars you know what i mean it'd just be, yeah it'd be no, so knowing you though you'd probably set it on fire yeah, I would. I would definitely. I would cover it in ethanol and light it on fire. Hey, anytime he is mad at his car, that's what he'll say. I'm about to roll this motherfucker outside and light it on fire. So that's the only time it'll actually come true. Yeah, yeah. So I would be furious. <laughs> but like, dude, that guy made a play. He got fucking t boned, and he made a play, and now he has eighty three thousand followers. At least the last time I looked. And old Stancy Pants Boy only has fifty thousand followers. So it's so. 
I don't think that you necessarily have to go to the unsafe extreme to get the following. I think there is some there, but you know, now I think that the only way he's going to go up is he's going to be like, we need to fix, like he needs to show the mistakes and he needs to fix some of them in order to, Dude, if he, if he starts a YouTube channel and does a full on rebuild on that thing, that would be good. That would be that good. Would drag a I would lot of people that. in. Yeah. I would watch that, you know, because that's a long that way back. That car itself road gained to hell, so much clout. Doing it right this time. Yeah, right. That, that's yeah. the key. Make it safe. Drive it on the road. Make yeah. it to where you can drive it. Dude, the, uh, dude, Learn from my mistakes. I don't that's even what the like, first video should be. I don't even like RX-8s. I think they're kind of ugly. And sorry, Dustin. And I don't I don't like them. I think it's weird. They got they got Silverado doors. I just I don't get it. The motor's not as fun. good. No. The motor's they, they messed up big time cool. when they brought back the RX eight. It's just weird looking, you know? It's just weird looking. It doesn't pay proper homage to the fucking original. I don't like the front fenders. They could have made that like well, uh, dude, work with the body of the car a little better. Like the and car in been... general, the whole fucking car. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm with Casey. I don't like it at all. And this is how I'll prove it. Uh, I haven't Googled this. I don't have a, I'm not for sure about this. I'm just telling Kevin to Google this and put a picture up. Kevin, Google RX-8 concept car. And then put up an RX-8 and tell me that they didn't fucking try and fit five pounds of shit in a two pound <laughs> sack because that's what they did they tried to appease both people you yeah. can still have a sports car and have kids and this and that's not what a sports yeah. car is supposed to be it's supposed to be it has back seats in case you got to throw one of the brats back there but that's it you know like it's supposed to be a purpose-built car and they best have no legs <laughs> yeah, 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 for if real. You back, if you back an RX-8 seat all the way up, dude, it's like this. It's kind of really close. So, yeah, so I don't like the RX-8s. But, dude, that car that Stancy Pants has, it used to be a nice car, dude. It used to oh, be. If yeah. you scroll back far enough, oh, it yeah. was a nice ride. It was like the fitment was good. It was white. had a big fucking country lab wing on it. It was like... Mm. Very it was cool. Clean as fuck. Yeah, dude. now yeah. it's like this ragged piece of junk, and it's like, but and I don't and like I would be curious to see his analytics. Like, dude. you know, he was at twenty three thousand. He's like, well, maybe if I add negative sixty degrees camber, I'll do better. And then I don't know, you know, like did he get thirty thousand followers from it? Can he go back and then? Because if he did, then that's a come up, and I'm for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. <clears throat> oh, dude, this guy, this guy. This is, well, this is kind of the same thing. I just basically threw the analytics at him, but he said this podcast sucks and only got frame calls it put LC <laughs> on a pedestal, which is like not proper English or whatever, which it has, it has two dislikes. And then, uh, dude, this is what I love. This is a, a subscriber. Oh, wow. I forgot. Yeah. TikTok uh, has dislikes now. I like it. I think it's funny. So then uh, I, uh, yeah. some dude named, I'm not going to name it. It's like username, fucking a million numbers. And uh, he said, you a D1 meat writer. <laughs> 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 Which, dude, I love those. I love when like guys that support the podcast get in there and they're just like, hey, don't fucking say that to those guys. You know, like, <laughs> I like that, you know. Cheers to y'all. Um, yeah, appreciate y'all it. Keep it going. Yeah, yeah. One guy said, oh, wait, I can say his name. So it's Teddy Drift 21. He says, and this was what we were discussing, whether uh, Formula Drift needs LZ or doesn't need LZ or what the move is going to be. And I do this. I'm not even involved in this conversation. I just clipped, I just clipped y'all. And so this guy, <laughs> <laughs> this guy says, uh, uh, somebody made the, the conversation, the comment, uh, RTR needs LZ. LZ doesn't need RTR, which like, duh. Duh. Yeah. We all know that. You yeah. know, everybody knows that. LZ doesn't need to do anything. LZ he, did it he for fucking, convenience. Dude, he's like what dude, he's like he's almost like the Mr. Beast of the car role. Like he's so big now, he would never have to yeah, work yeah. again. And he'd probably be okay. But he's just one of those fucking freaks of nature that just wants to be on the treadmill. You know, <laughs> he just wants to ride the treadmill because he can still ride the treadmill, you know? So I mean, he's he's growing the whole industry. That's though. Me. I agree. That's so that's what dude, that's one that's the most important thing about the podcast is that we support LZ because he's good for the industry. Like Definitely. he's good for that's it. That's what you know? we are doing. Yeah. That's doing what we're trying to do. We're trying to do the thing. same thing. So he said, so this other guy says all RTR needs is Denofa. No, it's not true. I don't think that's true. Denofa can drive and he definitely carries at least 50% on, on his back. But you definitely need LZ, and that was definitely a play. RTR, RTR. is a lot more than just drifting. Yeah, oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We went to Ford Fest, bro. They got 
Do it. They got a transformer uh, for a trailer, and that's <laughs> <laughs> crazy, dude. And they're like so legit. They got skateboards. They're like you know they got everything you can think of. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're like they had a legit. they had a limo out there drifting. If you didn't see any of those videos, oh, yeah. Vaughn was fucking eating that thing. Oh wow! I saw like, the I saw the um, the trophy truck out there or whatever it was that was drifting with. with we didn't get to see that. I think that was on Saturday. But oh, we well, went up I, on Sunday. I didn't. I didn't actually see it. I just seen it on on uh, YouTube and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so this guy. <laughs> His name is White Guy in the House. You guys have the best fucking names, though. I'm telling you. That's a very creative name if you only have three brain cells. So um, <laughs> he says, no, nah, I don't IDGAF if they give a shit or not. If I got an opinion and I say something, I'm going to do it respectfully. It's up to them on how it's taken. Not my job to care for them my job to care for them to care you're the lower end of the gene pool that's making everything fucking worse i honestly think he's like on our side i don't know he's saying to say it respectfully yeah but no, i but but can't still, spell like, <laughs> you're like, you're like, it's hard for me to side with you know. man you know like the fuck you're not giving the best case here I don't know. I just don't know. What side of the damn fence are you right now? <laughs> yeah, I got confused the whole way. Yeah, I was like, which side is it? Dude, you shouldn't give a fuck what anybody does with their money and unless you're giving constructive criticism. If you're trying to tell someone, hey, listen, like, dude, like, I feel like now I am allowed to tell someone who's trying to do a rear mount radiator the pitfalls of that because I did it and it yeah. sucks. Cock. You went through it. It sucks. And so if I'm telling you, I'm not going to be like, hey, you fucking moop. You know, <laughs> you should do it like this. I would just be like, hey, just so you know, I did this on my car and this is the problems that I ran into. It's probably going to be cheaper for you to go in because trying to find an alternative solution ends up being about the same. That is something that yeah. I struggled with for like a month because I was like, dude, everyone was saying like Jonathan Cash uh, did a boat hose on, yeah. on his car. Mm -hmm. Right. And it worked for him. So I went out and I bought some boat hose. But it was like I didn't buy brand new boat hose because it was almost the same price as uh, AN. So mm. if I was going to do one or the other, I'd probably do AN, Definitely right? Yeah. AN, yeah. All right. Well, so I bought some used stuff and it was the wrong diameter, which would have been I had to modify my water pump and the neck on my radiator. And I was like, I'm just, <laughs> you know, I'll just do AN. Dude, it's so always a rabbit hole. <laughs> right. And so like, if I feel like if I was going to tell someone, I wouldn't be like, you're, a, you're a, like the way people present things on the Internet is crazy. Like you're a fucking idiot because you didn't know. That's crazy to me. Yeah. It's crazy. All that right. Goes back to the uh, paying somebody and doing it yourself argument. Give us a kind of a rundown on your future plans with your car. Right now, future plans because it's broken. It's got two neutrals. <laughs> Lovely. <Oof. laughs> yeah. Um, right now is uh, just T56 uh, Magnum. I'm just going to go that route with it because I cannot afford a dog box and do everything else I want to do. So, do you think you should do a Magnum? Up front, if you're planning on doing an LS swap, a Magnum uh, T56, or should you do like we did and buy used ones? I don't know, because the first one that I had was fine until I went 6.0. Uh, I broke it with the 6.0. Hmm. I didn't break it with the 5.3. Like, it was fine the entire time. I could I'd drive it the exact same way I did, but I think it's the, the torque difference between the 5.0 and the 6.0, the or 5.3 five, five, and the 6.0. I feel like the torque's not that. Yeah. Not oh, that it's like seventy five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So uh, depends on your engine, uh, but I'm going to do T fifty six Magnum, and my hopes is is with the money that I've saved on doing that instead of a dog box is also doing uh, Wise Fab or FDF. I don't really care either one. I just want more angle in the car. Just being honest with you. So you want more angle before more power? Yeah, because I run out of angle right now. <laughs> I hit full lock every time I send that car. <laughs> yeah, what angle kit did you just say? Was uh, on? It's the villains. villains oh, okay. right now. It's yeah. just cut cut knuckles is all it it's is. It's like right 44 now. millimeters, yeah. right? Oh, I can't remember. It's pretty sure the villains is 44 over because I remember that the guy from villains told me that when I told him mine were 66 millimeters extended, he was like, I don't know who did that, but that's crazy. The ragged edge is like 45. <laughs> <laughs> In my head, I was like, <laughs> Oops! Yeah, but maybe? yes, I, I seriously every every initiation I am hitting lock every time. So it's hmm. maybe it's me sending it too hard. I don't know. But 
I like it, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So more angle is what it needs. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, uh, what's one piece of advice you would give to somebody that's getting into drifting? Start small. What do you mean by that? Any Don't do anything major. Well, the diff, go out there and have fun. I agree. Just keep it as simple as possible. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't put a hydro in it. Don't put angle in it. Learn the car the way it sits and add this, all this shit later in life. Once once you figure out the car the way it sits right now, factory with a welded diff, go on. I can agree with that. Yeah. It's going to make you a better driver. I promise. Yeah. I definitely <laughs> agree. You got any final words on that? Before? <laughs> I would put a I would put an e-brake in it. That's just me. No, don't do it. Okay, just, I, yeah, I can see I can see that. I only say it's that because, dude, we didn't yeah. put an, we didn't put one in Ariel's car, and she fucking co canned it. I'm just okay. saying, it's like a safety feature. I you drove know? for a year with no e-brake, almost a year. So you're saying you're better than women? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Yes. yes. <laughs> <My whole extensive>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just no. kidding. Uh, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, one announcement I want to make real quick. So I, I just I thought of something earlier today that I think would be pretty cool. So we keep getting DMs from you guys uh, just literally sending pictures of your cars. So uh, we figured we'd turn that into something. And what we want to do is if you want to join in, DM us pictures of your car along with, the you know, build specs and everything like that. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to pick five of you guys. And we're going to review them in a segment at the end of every podcast. And then after that, you guys will pick who is number one, which build is number one. Uh, and then that number one build will get a shout out on our Instagram. Uh, subscriber that only. Week. Yeah. Subscriber only, though. You had, you know, if you do get to the number one position, you have to be subscribed to every single one of our accounts in order to get the shout out. But that's it. So free shout out, free content, hit the subscribe button and go ahead and hit the like button, of course, too. Don't forget to hit the bell. And where can they find you at? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Um, it is uh, Hammer S13. Ironic, right? Anyways. <laughs> Hammer man. Um, and then we have a whole Cosmic Garage uh, YouTube channel that yeah. you can just Google and search Cosmic Garage. We'll, you'll we'll pull put them up. in the description. Yeah, we'll plug them. <clears throat> Hell yeah, that's it. That's it. All right. Well, I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.